Welcome back to Finance Homefront, where we unpack the complexities of personal finance with your host, Craig. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of investments, comparing two stalwarts of the financial landscape, stocks and mutual funds. But before we delve into the nuances, a quick reminder, while we're here to share insights and foster financial literacy, the content presented is for educational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, and the information provided should not be construed as financial advice. Now let's get into it. Stocks and mutual funds, both renowned for their wealth building potential, but each with its unique attributes and considerations. As we embark on this exploration, I encourage you to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more insightful content, and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Your engagement fuels our community of financial learners. So let's dive in and elevate our financial savvy together. In the vast landscape of investment opportunities, stocks and mutual funds stand out as two of the most popular vehicles for individuals looking to grow their wealth. While both avenues offer avenues for portfolio construction and wealth accumulation, they possess distinct characteristics that cater to the diverse goals and risk appetites of investors. In this extensive exploration, we delve into the intricate details of stocks versus mutual funds, dissecting their features, advantages, and disadvantages to empower investors with the knowledge necessary to make informed decisions. So let's dive into understanding stocks and mutual funds. At their core, stocks and mutual funds represent distinct approaches to investment. Stocks epitomize ownership in individual companies, entitling shareholders to a proportional share of profits and losses. Renowned entities such as Tesla, TSLA, and Amazon AMZN serve as quintessential examples wherein shareholders reap rewards as the company flourishes. Conversely, mutual funds function as collective investment vehicles, pooling resources from multiple investors to acquire a diversified portfolio of assets, including stocks, bonds, and other securities. Unlike stocks, which hinge on the performance of a single entity, mutual funds spread risk across various holdings, offering investors a broader exposure to the market. What are the distinguishing features and functions? While both stocks and mutual funds facilitate portfolio construction, their operational mechanisms and long-term outcomes diverge significantly. Stocks characterized by their direct ownership stakes reflect the fortunes of individual companies. As these companies thrive, stock prices ascend providing investors with opportunities for capital appreciation. On the contrary, mutual funds adopt a diversified approach, blending an assortment of assets to mitigate a risk and enhance stability, whether it be index funds mirroring popular benchmarks like the S&P 500 or actively managed funds created by knowledgeable professionals, mutual funds cater to a spectrum of investment objectives ranging from capital growth to income generation. The accessibility of stocks and mutual funds varies with investors leveraging brokerage accounts to engage in trading activities. While individual stocks offer ease of transaction through online platforms and intuitive applications, mutual funds extend their reach through diverse channels, including employer-sponsored retirement plans, such as 401ks, Oftentimes, investors participate in mutual funds unknowingly, as these funds constitute a prevalent component of retirement portfolios. Okay, let's look at the pros and cons. Stocks. Stocks boast an array of advantages, including 1. Ease of trade. With the proliferation of online brokerage platforms, trading individual stocks has become increasingly convenient empowering investors to execute transactions with ease. Two, potential for significant gains. The allure of substantial returns looms large in the realm of stocks, where successful investments can yield remarkable wealth accumulation over time. Three, low trading costs. Many brokerages offer individual stock trading with minimal fees, fostering cost-effective investment strategies. However, 
stocks are not devoid of drawbacks, which include one, exposure to significant losses. The inherent volatility of the stock market exposes investors to the risk of substantial losses, particularly during downturns. Two, time intensive research. Identifying lucrative stock opportunities demands meticulous research and analysis, consuming valuable time and resources. Three, emotional roller coaster. Investing in stocks can evoke intense emotions with fluctuations in prices triggering anxiety and stress, necessitating a keen understanding of one's risk tolerance. Now let's look at the pros and cons, mutual funds. Mutual funds present a distinct set of advantages, including one, potential for low cost investment. Passively managed index funds offer investors access to diversified portfolios at minimal expense ratios, facilitating cost efficient investment strategies. Two, instant diversification. By pooling resources into a basket of assets, Mutual funds afford investors immediate diversification, reducing exposure to individual stock risks. Three, reduced stress levels. The inherent diversification of mutual funds fosters stability, alleviating the emotional strain associated with volatile market conditions. Nevertheless, mutual funds harbor certain disadvantages such as one, sales loads. Some mutual funds impose sales charges upon the pur purchase or sale of shares detracting from investors' returns. Two, high expense ratios. Certain mutual funds levy high annual expense ratios, eroding potential gains and diminishing overall returns. Three, tax inefficiency. Capital gains distributions incurred by mutual funds may expose investors to tax liabilities, undermining the tax efficiency of these investments. How do we determine the ideal investment avenue? The decision between stocks and mutual funds hinges on individual goals and risk preferences. For investors prioritizing long-term wealth accumulation and diversification, mutual funds emerge as an attractive option, offering stability and reduced risk exposure. Conversely, those seeking higher returns and willing to navigate market volatility may gravitate towards individual stocks, leveraging their potential for significant gains. For novice investors with limited capital, initiating investment journeys with index mutual funds presents a prudent strategy, enabling gradual portfolio growth and exposure to market dynamics. As investors gain proficiency and confidence, diversification can be further enhanced through selective investments in individual stocks, aligning with evolving financial objectives. Exploring alternative investment avenues. In addition to stocks and mutual funds, investors may explore alternative investment vehicles, such as exchange traded funds. Similar to mutual funds in many aspects, ETFs offer diversified exposure to various asset classes, albeit with notable differences. Conducting thorough research and due diligence is imperative when evaluating investment options, empowering investors to make informed decisions aligned with their financial goals and risk tolerances. In conclusion, the difference between stocks and mutual funds underscores the many options within investment strategies. While stocks represents direct ownership and potential for substantial gains, Mutual funds offer diversified portfolios and reduced risk exposure. Investors are encouraged to embrace investment diversity, leveraging both avenues to construct resilient portfolios tailored to their individual needs and aspirations. By embracing a holistic approach to investment, anchored in meticulous research and strategic decision-making, investors can navigate the complexities of the financial landscape with confidence and clarity. As we wrap up our discussion on stocks versus mutual funds, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all our viewers for joining us on this journey through the intricacies of investment strategies. Your engagement and support are the lifeblood of our channel and we truly appreciate each and every one of you. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button 
and give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and insightful. By subscribing, you'll stay updated on all our latest content, empowering yourself with valuable financial knowledge along the way. And remember, your feedback matters. So drop us a comment below with your thoughts, questions, or suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep growing. Thank you for being part of the Finance Homefront community. We look forward to welcoming you back soon.